guys, we've got something very special in the studio. It's a re-release of the original Audio-Technica Soundbugger Portable Record Player, also known as the Mr. Disc in the US and the UK. Now, if you've never seen one of these before, it's got quite an interesting backstory. The first Soundbugger launched in 1983, which is around the time that I was born. No, seriously. And at that time, buying or renting vinyl records was still pretty common. And one of the ways that people liked to use this very compact portable turntable was to take them to the stores so that they could use these devices to listen and test vinyl records on the spot, which was very convenient. Everything came pre-configured, it's got its own replaceable cartridge, its own speed toggle, you don't have to tune any counterweights, and it even came with its own set of headphones that plug into its headphone jack. So literally, plug and play. All for $200, which in 1983 dollars would be around $600 today. It did require three C-size batteries because of course it did, it's 1983. Unfortunately, the sound burger came a little too late. It would have been a wildly popular product if it weren't for the Sony Walkman and the dominance of cassette tapes. But still, it is a pretty successful design. In fact, it became something of a cult classic, which apparently gave Audio-Technica enough reason to bring it back from the dead on its 60th year anniversary, but it now comes with modern day superpowers like Bluetooth 5.2 connectivity and a rechargeable battery that lasts for up to 12 hours on a single charge over USB Type-C. This re-release costs $200 in modern day terms, which is arguably cheaper than when it was first launched back in 1983. Of course, now since Bluetooth headphones and speakers are so common, it no longer comes with its own set of headphones. And it doesn't come with its own carrying case either. Pairing it to your Bluetooth speaker or headphones is quite simple. Press and hold the Bluetooth button for two seconds, put your speaker into pairing mode, and it should automatically pair up. After that, it works exactly the same way as the original sound burger. You lift the cover, pull out the tone arm to a locking position, pop in the record, close the lid, lift the arm out of the lock which starts spinning the platter and lay the needle gently on the first track. Easy. If you didn't catch that, feel free to rewatch this chapter. One thing I do wish the new version had that the old one did, apart from a carrying case and headphones, is onboard volume controls. Granted, it is actually quite common for wireless headphones and speakers to have their own native volume controls, but for that occasional true wireless earbuds that still don't have volume controls, the sound burger will lock the volume down at 50%. 50% volume for me is quite okay, but I know that some of you might feel that that is not loud enough. You prefer something like 60, 70, or even 80% volume. If that is you, then it might not be very ideal. The same thing happens when you plug the headphones directly into the line out jack. Since most wired headphones still don't have their own volume dials, needless to say, that will be a problem. But it won't be a problem for any headphones or speaker setup that has its own volume controls. Apart from that, I do enjoy the sound burger so, so much. Some of you could have watched this video about why I sold my turntable. It's a very old video from 2018. Yes, I looked very different back then. More handsome, right? Long story short, I wanted to invest in a decent camera, but couldn't spare the funds. So I decided to sell my turntable. Anyway, my turntable was just sitting there and I didn't have the time to listen to my records. So it made sense at that time to rotate my money back into the business since I was getting very serious about YouTube. But I did keep my records though because I thought perhaps someday I might get a turntable again. But in actual fact, by then I had already moved on from the format and those records 
we're just sitting in boxes. To this day. <laughs> then came the sound burger. Testing the sound burger reminded me that playing music on vinyl is such a special experience. Very different, as in you have to be really involved in the process. Listening requires some effort and it's delayed gratification all the way rather than just getting everything instantly by tapping on a screen. It can even be somewhat meditative in of itself and the new sound burger lets me enjoy that experience again fully portable, fully wireless without all the cables and equipment often associated with record player setups. I'm just not sure if anyone nowadays will be taking this outdoors even though it's portable because people who do invest and listen to vinyl records now tend to be much more careful with them rather than take them outside and risk getting them dirty, scratched, or even worse, broken. But I want to hear from you guys. Have any of you used the original Sound Burger before? And how did you use such a device? Let me know in the comments. And thanks for watching through the whole video, by the way, because I sound terrible today. I've got a blocked nose, so thanks for enduring that. Like, share, and subscribe for more. I'm also on Discord, so if you have Discord, come and join the chat. Link is in the description. I've also made a video about which are the best earbuds of 2023. Click here to watch it or watch another video from this channel.